You're listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Welcome back. Welcome to a fresh episode. I'm so glad that you're here. And this week, it's all about feeling good and looking good and how that all begins from the inside out. So are you tired of feeling fatigued? Are you struggling with hormonal imbalances and searching for a holistic solution to reclaim your vitality? Well, in this episode, we've got you covered because I'm speaking with Joy founder Katie Whalen, and she's sharing her personal journey through infertility, miscarriages, and IVF, and she highlights her struggles with hormonal imbalance, fatigue, and weight gain that so many women face. I think it's the norm for us to face this, not the exception. And she's discussing how her search for a holistic solution led her to discover hormone optimization and peptide therapies, which ultimately transformed her life. So through this candid discussion, Katie explains the mission behind her company, Joy, J-O-I, and how that is providing accessible options for women to manage their health holistically and feel like themselves again to get that spark back. So it's not just about looking better, right? It's about feeling better. And then from that, everything else emanates out and you bring it to your work, you bring it to your family life, you bring it to your creative life. Because how often do we lose that creative sense of self when we don't feel well? We don't feel like our our normal 25-year-old selves. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you learn a lot. Like every episode, I think it's so heavy in the educational space because I think we're all curious and we all want to keep learning. And when we do that, we stay young. And this is another great way to help you stay young and curious and feel good inside your own body. So I hope you enjoy this episode. So if you do, please share it out. Please leave us a review and I uh, hope you learn a lot in this episode with Katie Whalen. Well, hello, Katie. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, to get us started, um, I'm so excited to be talking about this particular subject because I feel like there is a dearth of understanding and education out there, even though hormone replacement therapy has been out on the market for quite some time. I still feel like there's a lot of fear or misunderstanding around it. But before we get into all of that, can you take us through your personal origin story, which was fundamental in starting your company, Joy Women's Wellness? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was not planning on doing this at all. It actually started because my husband went through something crazy with his hormones. Um, you know, when I was trying to start my family, he actually had zero libido. It caused a lot of stress in our marriage. And, you know, he was the healthcare entrepreneur. So, it, you know, he went to, to get help by my urging, by my demanding. Um, and it took him years to feel better and figure out what was going on. And he, he finally did. He figured out it was low testosterone from some stress that we had had. So, you know, once he was able to fix it, he saw just that big opportunity to help other men. And, you know, being the entrepreneur that he was, he was like, I'm, I've got this, we're going to do this. He had, he had, you know, previously owned stem cells and then, you know, COVID had really shut those down. So like the telehealth model made sense. But yeah, I was, I was just the supportive wife saying, you know, this is great, let's do it. Um, and then went through my own struggles with infertility and then actually just having two, <laughs> two babies at, in my low forties, I was just found myself very unfamiliar with who I was when I looked in the mirror, just the the extra weight, the crazy brain fog, the low energy um, motivation, you know, honestly, just anxiety and depression as well. So the first thing I did, or I was, you know, lucky enough to have access to was the the men's side of our business. So I, you know, did, did a big blood test and started on, you know, hormone therapy, started balancing my hormones. So the more I got into it, the better I felt, um, the more I was just surprised that women don't like know more about yeah. this. And so that's when, you know, I was like, I, there's just something missing. We can't just do this for men. There's an even bigger need for women who go through all the things that we go through. Um, so that's when I started, you know, learning all about perimenopause and menopause and, and we got joy started, you know, six months after the men's side. Oh, wow. So pretty quickly, actually. Yeah, you know, we're 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 pretty scrappy and we were able to do it quickly um because we we really operate under one company. Um Joy is just another brand for women. Yeah. Why do you think it it's not 
just common knowledge, you know, when we're growing up, like, of course, our hormones change. We understand that when we go through puberty, no one really talks about perimenopause or menopause besides, you know, the jokes about sweating and, you know, night sweats and all sweats all the time and, and <laughs> anger and, and depression and things like that. But it's like, well, you know, this is just what you have to go through as a woman, you know, and it's just kind of like brushed yeah. off. Why do you it's, think that is? It's an, it's insane. I mean, I didn't even know the term perimenopause and we're just not taught that, you know, it's crazy. Even crazier is our doctors are not taught about you know, health, hormone health and menopause care. And I think there's a lot of things to it. One of them being that, you know, traditionally the healthcare system has been geared toward men, studying men, doing research on men because of our cycles and those variables are harder to control. Um, and then I also think, I think women are tough <laughs> and I think, um, we do grin and bear it and think yeah. we need to just get through it. And, and I, I do think that's, that's changing. Thankfully, um, we're talking about it more, which is fantastic. Um, you know, the other big piece that set us back was in 2002, there was a study called the WHI that came out saying that hormone therapy caused breast cancer. And it was a huge scare, like immediately dropped, you know, everyone off of hormones, just cold turkey got off of their hormone therapy, caused a lot of harm. Um, because it was basically debunked pretty soon after that, but that headline never really made it. So we're yeah. still trying to catch up to the damage that that's basically done. Um, yeah, we're just lots of factors, but, but, you know, thankfully I think it'll be better for our, you know, for our daughters. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even just having this conversation right now, it's, it's normalizing HRT, hormone replacement therapy, and putting it a little bug, like to the woman listening who has little kids who, you know, is years away from needing treatment or a little bit of support. This is something that she will remember and be like, okay, this isn't some big, scary, unknown thing. There's plenty of research and plenty of people out there who have been benefiting from this. So can mm -hmm. you take us through, typically when a woman starts to realize, you know, yes, I'm getting older, I'm not feeling like myself. What is the first step when they come to you, when they come to Joy, to get to get a baseline of what's even going on? Yeah, we, we usually have, you know, a lot of women come and just say, you know, I'm, you know, upper 30s or low 40s. And for some reason, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong. I haven't changed anything, but I am just not feeling well. I have more anxiety. Maybe you gained, you know, weight that you're not sure why because you haven't changed your diet or lifestyle habits. So the first thing and the best thing I think to do is to get a to get a lab because there's so many different variables that could that could be going on and so many different ways to address it. I think that a woman should be able to make her own choices. The power should be in your hands to figure out like what is your best option. But a lab will give you a lot of um, good avenues. It could you could look at what you're you know deficient in vitamin and mineral wise. You could see if you have any inflammation. Um, you could look at you know basically whole body systems to see how they're functioning and what you could improve. Um, obviously, we we focus heavily on looking at hormones um, because they. They they are just a key foundational, yeah. um, you know, thing for what for what we need, and they can be super helpful, and not only for addressing symptoms, but just actually helping us live a you know a better life, a better life, more vital life, which I think is more important than covering up the symptoms. Oh, absolutely, and that's honestly what enrages me most about modern Western medicine. It's like there's never this desire to figure out the root cause of an issue. It's mm -hmm. always prescribe, prescribe, prescribe. And that just, I understand why it is that way and, and the origins of that and why it came to be that way. But at the same time, it's like so many people out there are suffering and they're not getting the relief that they need because they don't fundamentally understand what's really going on. And you're, you hit it right on the head. I think hormones are massively important in dictating mm -hmm. how we feel and how our metabolism goes and everything else. So when when you see clients, what would you say is the most common issue with women coming to you? Is it low estrogen, high estrogen, low testosterone? What is what do you see a lot the most of? 
you know, I see a lot of women coming to us in their upper 30s, low 40s, mid 40s, and those women typically have low progesterone, higher estrogen, which makes sense, you know, based on, you know, that age range. That's the kind of the first thing to go in perimenopause is our progesterone starts to go lower. And then progesterone actually opposes estrogen. So your estrogen will go higher during that time. And it can go, you know, it can go up and down and be a little bit wacky, but generally like that's, that's how, um, that's how they work together. And so we look at those as a ratio. And then I see like time and time again, like so many women are just so super low in testosterone. Mm. And I think that's a lot to do with, you know, medications we take and lifestyle and stress and all this, all the stuff, um, you know, that we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis. But, you know, it's, it's rare when a woman comes to, to us and has like a nice, you know, solid testosterone level. Mm. Wow. That's so interesting. And I remember reading somewhere that progesterone is the happy hormone. Can you talk a mm. little bit about why having a good level of progesterone is so important, not just to stabilize the estrogen, but just in how it makes us feel? Yeah, you know, hormone therapy in general can take six months, I would say, to dial in and get right. But but sometimes progesterone, especially, you can feel right away. And I will tell you my experience is the first night I took it, I just went, oh, it was like a big sigh like yeah. of relief. And like I just kind of relaxed and I slept the whole through the night. And I was like, whoa, that's mm-hmm. what progesterone does. It literally just kind of eases your mind. It stops those racing thoughts from happening so much and just kind of like gives you a sense of peace, which, you know, a lot of us need these days. Um, So yeah, it's a, it's a very important hormone. Okay. So let's talk brass tacks. If someone is coming to joy, because you're completely online, correct? We are. Mm -hmm. So how then do they customize their experience so that they're getting, you know, that personalized treatment that they would spend literally thousands of dollars. I know this because I've done it (laughs) at a clinic, at a hormone replacement clinic somewhere. How do they get that same experience with you online? Yeah. You know, there's still a lot of personal touch um, with what we do, even though it's, you know, it's, it's virtual. Um, I think we just make it easier that way and more accessible, but we still are, you know, we still have people talking to you. So the first thing we do is send you to a local lab draw station for your lab. And so we are partnered with LabCorp and Quest, we can also send someone to your home. We cover about 70% of the U.S. that way. So that's kind of a cool, convenient option. Um, And then we'll set you up with a a follow-up visit. And during that visit, you'll, you know, do a Zoom call just like we're doing with a provider. And then we'll also have a coach hop on towards the end of the call because we like to make sure you have like immediate one-on-one like follow-up questions, someone to text, someone to email access when you when you need anything or have questions. So there's still a lot of personalization, you know, that way from from us, you know, having a care team around you. Um But during that consult, you'll go over kind of, hey, this is what your labs are saying. Tell us how you're feeling and what your goals are. And from there, there's, you know, many different options you can do in terms of, you know, lifestyle changes, therapies, supplementation, really depends on your comfort level. And then you said it it takes sometimes up to six months to kind of feel that balance come in and feel like, okay, this is the right amount. I'm happy with this. Um, is that typical or, or like you said, that first night that you took progesterone, you were feeling relief. Like what's the average, would you say with, with women who are in the perimenopausal state or maybe even menopause, how soon do they feel relief? You can feel some of, you can feel these therapies sometimes right away. And it really, it's crazy how individual we are. Some, you know, some people will take one shot of testosterone or one pill of progesterone and go, whoa, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, And some will be like, "Uh, yeah, I think I feel better. You know, so this just really depends on the individual. And that's why I say it takes six months because depending on how you're feeling or what's changed, we might want to change that, that dose or maybe even the application method of how you're taking them. And is HRT something that you would have to be on the rest of your life or is it like a balancing act and then you're good? Um, it's It depends. It's really up to how you want to do it. I will tell you, I will probably be on it for most of my life. It's really like, how long is it working for you? Mm-hmm. So, you know, these hormones all have a job and do things, right? So if you, you know, lose your progesterone, you're going to have more issues with 
um, anxiety, stress, sleep. So, you know, that, that, that is what that does. Estrogen also does, you know, a host of wonderful things for us, helps, you know, helps our, protect our brain, our bones, um, our heart, which is very important for women. Um, so as soon as you lose that estrogen, you know, those things will start to decline. Um, you'll age a little bit more rapidly. So you don't have to stay on it forever, but I, if, if it's going well for you, I don't, you, it's not something you need to get off of either. Yeah. That, I think what you just said is so important. The anti-aging aspect of it. Cause I've read all of Suzanne Summers books. I love her so yeah. much. Um, yes. and that was like her big impetus for, for getting into that is she wanted to live, you know, as healthy and as happy and feel as best as she could. And so that's why she really broke into that. And it, it, I was shocked to learn how mm. much hormones really do affect everything, including anti-aging. I yes. mean, it's just unreal. Yeah. You know, when, when they, when we lose our estrogen in menopause, we lose 30% of the skin in our collagen <laughs> in yes. the first like five years or something like that. And then it's like 1% a year after that. So it's like, it's, it's a really actually pretty rapid change when you, when those hormones change. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's just vanity, but, but your heart, you know, heart disease is the number one cause of death in women. And that's nothing to do with vanity and estrogen, per, you know, cuts your risk of heart disease, disease by up to 73%. So heart, bones, mental health, you know, brain degenerating diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. It's very important to not only live longer, but just to have those years be more vital. Yeah, absolutely. And there is something that we can do about it right now. I mean, that's clear. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. I do feel like you're almost picking, like now is the time to pick what your later years are going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. By now or by later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I always say when I'm at the grocery store spending a million dollars. I know. <laughs> um, in addition to hormone replacement therapy, you also have these really incredible peptide therapies on your mm -hmm. site. Can you talk about what peptides are for the uneducated? I'm, I've recently just learned about it myself um, and what they do for the skin. Yeah. So we we all have about 7,000 peptides running through our bodies. So they're a natural short chain of amino acids. And, you know, it's usually one to 50. So if you look at that versus a protein is a longer chain of amino acids. So that's kind of how you can think about them chemically. Mm -hmm. um, but what they do is direct our cells to to perform specific tasks. So I think of them as like a key to opening a door. So like hormones are like the foundation of the home, but a peptide will, is like the key to a door um, or the lock to a window. So it specifically will help, you know, target certain things. Like, so we have peptides for weight loss, which is a big one right now. And then peptides for skin health, peptides for hair growth, peptides for energy, um, all pe peptides for gut health, you know, one of my favorite peptides is kind of just overall vitality, but what it does is you take it at night when you sleep uh, or before bed, and it tells your body to release more of its own growth hormone mm. um, so that, you know, and growth hormones at our highest when we're in middle school age, and then it declines after that when we age. So if you think about all the things that it does, it's deeper sleep, the ability to lose fat and, you know, keep lean muscle. It's faster recovery. It's more energy. So it's like, I think of that one as like an overall vitality peptide that I, I basically recommend to all my friends and anybody who's, um, you know, over 30. Yeah. It's so interesting to me because I feel like we are such on the brink of all of this information coming out, a more holistic approach to almost everything in the body, but especially when it comes to anti-aging and women's health, especially. Like you said, it wasn't really studied until in the 90s, they allowed women into their scientific studies because of the whole cycle factor. So mm -hmm. where do you see the future of holistic health going? Is it going to be more specialized like this? Is it going to be like, what? where is the frontier when it comes to this? Are you already looking into new things to add to joy? I'm always looking into new <laughs> things. I, I call myself the chief peptide tester. <laughs> <laughs> try all the things. You know, I think I sent you a peptide face cream, yes. uh, but I'm right now I'm testing a, uh, that cream because I, I love that 
that face cream, but I'm testing it by, with adding some estrogen, some estradiol to it. Mm. Um, and we talked about, you know, how estrogen is very lubricating for the skin and helps build collagen. So those two together, I'm, I'm really liking it, but to answer your question, I'm definitely always, um, testing out new things. And, and, um, I think, I think ultimately I'm hoping that in the future, just more people have access and, um, it's easier for people to choose, like I said, basically how they want to age versus before I feel like we were always giving the power to our doctors or to the white coats. Absolutely. 100%. Do you think that the education factor is probably the biggest barrier to people feeling better and doing what it takes? Or is it a price thing? What do you think holds most, you know, the standard person back who has heard about HRT maybe, but it's like, oh, I just, I don't know. That's just too much to wrap my head around. I'm just, I'm so busy in my own life. (laughs) I mean, I think for HRT specifically, it's the, it's, it is the education piece. I think if, you know, I mean, it was for me, I didn't know anything about it. And now I'm so passionate about it after I've, you know, read the books and listened to the doctors speak like, wow, like, I don't know why someone wouldn't choose to be on HRT. And like I said, I think it's up to everyone to make that decision. But like from what I know now, it's 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 something that, you know, everyone woman want to feel better. Everyone wants to have more energy. Everyone wants to, um, just, you know, keep disease at bay for as long as you can. Yeah. I think when you approach it that way, like it is you know, the anti-aging and not even from a vanity standpoint, like you're, you're protecting the aging of your heart and the disease in your right. heart and your brain. Um, I think that to me, that's the biggest selling point. It's like, I want to be there for my kids for as long as possible. And I want to still feel like me, you know, I don't mm-hmm. want to feel like some decrepit grandmother who can't even get on the floor and do things that I want to do. Like that, I don't know. I'm, I've always been like a very rebellious person. and I don't like <laughs> Like you said, going along with what everybody says, oh, you're 50 now, you're 60 now, this is how life is supposed to look. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I love that. Good. That's how more, more people should be for sure. Absolutely. How how intricate, I mean, obviously you're a tech company at your core. How intricate has tech been in balancing this personalized care, being like, you know, having that human factor while also utilizing and leveraging tech? way more than I thought it was going to be (laughs) because it is something I'll tell you, I know nothing about. And as a business owner and entrepreneur, it's, it's, um, one, it's been one of our tougher hurdles to figure out along the way. So, I mean, it's very important because you, in order to scale, in order to serve, in order to, you know, be consistent with care, you have to have that piece baked in. Mm -hmm. Um, so we definitely try, try we're constantly working on that part of it you know but we all again then want to balance it with the, with the human element because we don't want to just be you know some ai thing that you're yeah. you know interacting with we are you know real people at you know behind the computer screens well and just to to kind of touch on that what has been some of the most i don't know heart touching, memorable, awesome moments of being a founder of a company that's helping women holistically. Do you have any success stories that kind of you always remember? Yeah. You know, I I do, I do because that's like the best part of it. Yeah. And, you know, it's been a couple of years of really hard work grinding. And so sometimes you forget like why you're doing it. Um, and, and when I get a message from someone that, um, and really, you know, make my whole month. So I had a a friend, um, I actually someone I did her podcast and she was like, I don't know much about it. You know, I don't need to know, but like, let's talk. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a month later she was like, you know, let's just, let's do a test. I feel like I'm healthy and good, but you know, maybe something's a little bit off. I'm just curious. And then, you know, we did a test, found some things, put her on some therapies. And a month later I got this text that said, Oh my God, thank you for starting your company. I did not know I could feel this good. Mm. And like just went on and on about like how I've changed her life. And I was like, wow, like that's cool to hear. Like stories like that. We also just did a an email campaign where we, you know, are saying, hey, please share your story um, and get, you know, percent discount off your next um order. And we've gotten a ton of emails with, you know, stories and pictures and it's so cool to hear um, actual real stories 
of yeah. someone where you've changed, touched their life in some way and made it better. And that really honestly sticks with me. And I love it. Hoping for way more of those. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's just so cool that it started from your husband having an issue and seeking help and figuring this out. And then you were like, okay, well, let's pair onto that. And then you started to feel better. And then you just, through your own experience, are creating this positive ripple effect in the world. I mean, I think to the core of who we are as humans on earth, like that's kind of our job. Like that's why we're here. And for you to be fulfilling that, I think is is really cool. And and to show your children, you know, they're young now, but they're going to grow up and know that you did this for so many people. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I do think that's a really wonderful point. Like you, the reason that we have both the men's and women's side is because, you know, you can't, when one person starts to really feel better and, you know, have more energy and maybe that libido is back, like it really stinks if the other partner is mm-hmm. not caught up and are on the same page. So it is important to like, you know, as a part, as a couple to kind of lift each other up and go through it together. It makes it a lot easier as well. Um, makes marriage a lot stronger. Yeah. And I just want to touch on that just a little bit, because I feel like, you know, we all hear that divorce is on the rise and a lot of women aren't choosing to get married or have children. But I think a big part of that is because marriages don't feel like a true partnership, especially when new kids come along. So for the woman tuning in, whose husband might be not really showing up or not, you know, she can tell that something's not right with him. What are some key signs of testosterone deficiency or hormonal issues with men um, that could be showing up behaviorally? Uh, Great question. So it's, you know, lower motivation, also brain fog. Um, A lot of times it's weight around the middle. um, And clearly lack of libido is a big sign. Um, So all those things, you know, it was it was funny because when my husband was going through it, I kind of thought it was me. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I've gained weight and now you don't find me as attractive. Um, so we kind of make excuses and do that to ourselves. But really, it wasn't, wasn't me at all. Um, it was all him. And so we need to be able to separate those things. You know, when you're low in testosterone, you also get a little shorter. So a little more quick to anger. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of those little things um, are something to look out for. And what is the name of? the male side of the company? Blokes, B-L-O-K-E-S. We tried to make it a little bit cheeky. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Okay. So, oh my gosh, we're almost to the end of time. Um, If there were one final message that you would want to leave with the woman listening to this, what would that be? Mm, You are worth it. Short and sweet. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Okay, Katie, how can I listener find out more about Joy Women's Wellness Online and work with you if they so choose? Yeah, I hang out a lot on IG. Um, So definitely connect with us there. We're Joy Women's Wellness and Joy is spelled J-O-I. And then our website is choosejoy.co. Oh, I love that. Yeah, choose joy. That's so true. In so many ways. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much for sharing uh, your company with us, your work, your mission, and educating us on all things HRT and peptides. I'm really, really tuning into more about peptides um, because it's just such a a new thing in my world. So thank you for sharing Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed podcast, where we navigate the beautiful chaos of motherhood together. For more inspiration and insights, please visit our website at motherhoodunstressed.com or you can visit me on social at motherhoodunstressed. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. Until next time, stay unstressed, empowered, and embrace the joy of motherhood. Take care and I'll catch you on the next episode.